you currently have a mid-tower gaming PC that you're looking to downsize, or perhaps you have an ITX build in mind that you'd like to start from the ground up, the NZXT H1 is definitely a case that should be towards the top of your list. This is the mainstream case that I think a lot of us have been waiting for. Under 15 liters, check. Premium build quality, check. Space optimized layout, check. But it doesn't stop there. The NZXT H1 comes fitted with a liquid cooler and a gold rated power supply, of which has the cables pre-routed and managed out of the box. So today we are diving into everything you need to know about the new NZXT H1. And I've got to say, I think you guys are really, really going to like this one. So with more of us looking to downsize our gaming PCs, the new NZXT H1 has arrived at just the right time. This is a 13.6 liter case that uses a vertical orientation and a sandwich layout for the internals. That means that your motherboard and GPU compartment are separate and stacked together side by side and then connected via a PCIe 3.0 x16 riser cable. The design here is quite special because space optimized sandwich layout cases like this are typically very, very expensive and hard to get, but the price here is a lot more palatable and being NZXT, you can only guess that availability is going to be quite good. Now, probably the most important thing that you need to know about the new NZXT H1 before you pull the trigger is the fact that it's sold in a kit. And usually this is quite annoying because you're forced into you know certain hardware that you might not want. But firstly, the hardware here that you're getting is pre-installed correctly and it's actually good hardware. And secondly, the overall Overall value is quite decent. Of course though there will be many of you who already have ITX systems and perhaps want to move to something a bit more premium like the H1 and maybe you already have some of the components that are included in this kit but unfortunately there is no other option. I can understand why NZXT have done this though and it's mainly to cater to a larger audience and make the H1 quite easy to build in. So in the kit of course you get the H1 enclosure with the PCIe riser cable, you get a 140mm liquid oil in one cooler for your CPU with a PWM fan, and lastly a 650 watt 80 plus gold SFX power supply. This brings us to $349 US, which does sound like a lot, but once you break down the value of the liquid cooler and the power supply, the H1 enclosure itself isn't that expensive for this style of case. Again, NZXT are considering a larger audience here, and they have succeeded in making the H1 very easy to build in. Let's take a look at a size comparison versus some of the other small form factor cases that some of you may be aware of, the Dan A4 SFX, the Ghost S1, the NKSM1, and the Streetcom DA2. So at 13.6 liters, it's around one liter bigger than the NKSM M1, but its footprint on your desk is actually less than the Dan A4 at just 350 centimeters squared. The exterior consists of a shell that wraps around both sides of the case, a ventilated rear panel, and a tinted tempered glass front panel. The majority of the exterior is steel, just like the rest of NZXT's cases, and you have the choice of either a matte white or matte black for the main wraparound panel. What's cool here is that it just slides off vertically from the case for easy access. It slots into these grooves on the frame, and then the front and rear panel lock it into place with two small pegs at the top. Magnetic dust filters line the entire height of the left and right sides of the case, and we'll take a look at whether these actually restrict airflow in just a minute. IO and power button can be found at the top of the case, thankfully just the essentials here and nothing overboard, an audio jack with a splitter included, and two USB 3.2 ports, a Gen 1 Type-A and Gen 2 Type-C. Now let's take a look at the internals, starting with that liquid cooler. And this seems to be a custom-made solution specifically for this case, so there's no product name for this one, but I can tell you that the pump is mounted within the radiator just like their 120mm Kraken M22. The pump is DC and spins it up to 4000 RPM, but is thankfully still relatively quiet. The tubes are designed to be the perfect length to allow no compression and kinking when it's opened or closed, and the radiator is secured to the side of the case via a hinge and two small screws. Similar story with the power supply, NZXT actually don't sell SFX units, but this one seems to be produced only for this case. It's rated for 650 watts with an 80 plus gold efficiency, that's plenty for basically 
any hardware that you can fit into the H1. There are two two and a half inch drive slots next to the power supply and installation here is completely toolless, which is greatly appreciated. You'll also find a little removable cover here, which keeps those cables out of sight. Definitely nice to have considering the tempered glass. Now in terms of GPU support, the H1 can fit two and a half slot cards up to 305 mils long and 145 mils tall. But do note that if your card is longer than 265 mils, the height clearance is then reduced to 128 as it does need to clear that top IO. Now, usually I gloss over the building process for case reviews because most of the time it's not that interesting, but for the H1, I think it's definitely worth taking a look. Firstly, you'll want to remove all of the panels so that you're just working with the frame of the case and you'll want to prepare the motherboard with the mounting kit that's included in the box. The one that I've got here is the Intel mounting kit for our 9900K. By opening up and unlocking the radiator, it'll swing open. We'll get access to our motherboard tray here where we can install our motherboard, pretty straightforward. Next up is mounting the AIO and Thankfully, this is nice and easy. No need to go wrestling around or routing tubes. Next is plugging in some of those cables. So we've got our motherboard 24 pin cable, our eight pin CPU cable, and all of our IO cables. What I appreciate here is that you don't have to go fiddling around or digging through the case to plug these in and find them. NZXT have already pre-routed these for you. Lastly, plug in the riser cable, then the pump and fan cable from the liquid cooler, and then lock that radiator back into place. Next up are the two and a half inch drives if you have any, relatively quick installation here. And then lastly, just install your GPU. Just two screws there, the card should seat nicely into the riser cable, and then your PCIe power cables should be within reach. Now NZXT do include zip ties for post build cable management, but honestly, you won't be needing them. All in all, you've got an exceptionally clean and tidy build under 15 liters, which barely takes up any room on your desk and for gaming focused builds there's definitely a lot to love. But now let's talk about system thermals, an increasingly important topic of discussion as performance per liter increases and system density reaches new levels. So NZXD claim that the H1 will intake air through the side panels and then exhaust it out of the back. However, the problem here is that there is zero exhaust fans to encourage this airflow direction. For a 13 and a half liter case, that is a bit unusual, but I can understand that they want to keep this thing as clean and simple as possible. The other oversight though, most of you will be using this case with an open air graphics card and the coolers on most open air cards will expel heat from both the back and the front. So what that means is that more than half of the heat from an open air graphics card gets pinned against that front panel panel, then recirculated back to the GPU, most of it never really ever escaping. All you have to do is really feel the very warm front panel while gaming to realize that this is an issue. So a ventilated front panel would have been ideal here for thermals and noise levels, but I really do understand that NZXT are trying to keep up with the design language of the rest of the H series cases, and that means using tinted tempered glass. Now you would expect the other portion of the graphics card heat to escape from the back, but half of this airflow is blocked too, this time by the thick riser cable. Let's not forget about the heat trapped between the back plate and the motherboard tray. Without any exhaust fans, this means that GPU thermals in the H1 leave a little bit to be desired. But firstly, on the note of CPU thermals, NZXT's H1 is really quite impressive. It can keep up with larger cases, even when those use larger coolers. With the liquid cooler set to a more moderate 1500 RPM fan speed, our overclocked 9900K is kept well under control during a 20 minute blender render. A big thumbs up to NZXT here, the integrated liquid cooler was an excellent choice, and another thumbs up for it being so easy to install onto our build. Also, I didn't find the dust filters too restrictive either, thankfully, and it's probably best just to keep them on unless you want the absolute best thermal performance possible. Overall, we're looking at an improvement of around one and a half degrees C for CPU thermals by removing the filter, certainly not much really. But moving on to GPU thermals, the NZXT H1 proves to be one of the warmer ITX cases that I've tested. This is a bit disappointing for an otherwise excellent case, but it's a consequence of the few design 
decisions that we mentioned previously. That includes the lack of a single exhaust fan and the tempered glass blocking the GPU exhaust flow. It's nothing too alarming though, if I'm honest. We are using a high TDP card in here as well. On the bright side, it's a little bit cooler than the Fractal Design Node 202, Silverstone LD03 and Fantex Evolve Shift. So from that comparison, the H1 really isn't too bad. It's only when you compare it to better ventilated cases that don't use tempered glass and are a bit more optimized in terms of fan count and fan placement that GPU thermals look a little bit warmer than we'd like. But for CPU thermals, the H1 is very good. It'll handle anything up to a 9900K or 3800X, no problem at all. And maybe even a 3950X if you're prepared to set a manual voltage and clock speed. For most of you building high-end games gaming PCs in the H1 though with something like a 9700K or Ryzen 5 3600, you'll certainly have no issues at all. Also, if you haven't seen my video on GPU undervolting yet, I'd highly recommend checking that out if you are considering this case. You can drop up to 10 degrees by just dialing in a manual voltage profile in MSI Afterburner. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Now I did briefly test a blower style graphics card just to see what the thermal behavior would be there, seeing as getting the heat out of this case is a bit of a problem, but I'd highly recommend avoiding blower style cards for the H1. Given the orientation of the case, the hot air from the graphics card isn't exhausted out of the enclosure, but rather below it, to which it then makes its way back up into the case. So blower card performance here is not great at all. If you can go for an open air card, that would be your best bet. So overall, I can give the NZXT H1 a really solid recommendation if you are looking to do a new ITX gaming PC build. And honestly, guys, I'll just say that I am really happy to finally see a mainstream company enter this premium small form factor case market. I would say that this is easily a top five case recommendation from me. I really like how they've implemented the kit, making it so easy to build in and lowering the barrier to entry for those who want to downsize their system. Of course, we will be doing a bit of follow up content with the NZXT H1. So make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see that. And of course, if you'd like to pick one up, you can find it linked down below in the description. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.